But this bridge here, which we're going to drive over, it takes you right across the Wabash River. I'm going to try to drive slow, and if you can see, there's the Wabash River. And it's the Wayne Street Bridge is what it's called. Indiana State Police still aren't saying why they're searching this portion of the Wabash River in Peru. Those searches started up weeks ago after a man who's been tied to the Delphi murder investigation was temporarily taken out of jail on other separate charges and was taken out by state police detectives. That's right. Fox 59's Max Lewis shares an update on the search and what a retired FBI agent thinks they're looking for. For three weeks now, Indiana State Police have been searching the Wabash River in Peru, but won't say what they're looking for or why they're there. We witnessed them once again wading through the shallow waters and using metal detectors to search the riverbed. Metal detector guy all of a sudden alerts to something, a couple guys kind of move over there and then start uh, examining that spot. And then if they don't find it, he goes back over that same spot and kind of pinpoints it a little bit closer. State police initially started the search sort of in the area just right here where we are now. But the search has since moved a little bit farther downstream and they still seem to be focusing on the north side of the river. Crews were also seen clearing brush and branches on both sides of the Wabash near the search area. The fact that they've been out there for three weeks, which is a lot of manpower, a lot of time, you would suspect that they're looking for something very important. The search area is just two miles from the former home of Kagan Klein, who has been tied to the Delphi murder investigation. Court filings reveal that state police temporarily took Klein out of jail last month, where he's awaiting trial on unrelated charges. Shortly after that, the searches began, and retired FBI Special Agent Paul Keenan says that's no coincidence. There's got to be a reason that you have to take him out of jail. You don't just interview somebody. You can interview him in jail. So more than likely, he needed to be out to show them something uh, that he couldn't describe from prison. Keenan said the teams are likely doing grid searches and expanding the area as they come up empty-handed. He says he hopes they find the answers they need, but it won't be easy. But it's difficult after five years to find something um, in, a, in a river with a current that's pushing it for five years. In Peru, Max Lewis, Fox 59 News. and the Indiana State Police searching the Wombash River in Peru. The search started five weeks ago. The search is believed to be connected to Kagan Klein and the weapon used in the Delphi murders. ITMH Richard Essex has this story for us. Kagan Klein was taken out of jail a couple weeks ago. He is facing 30 child porn related charges for using a fake social media account, Anthony Shots. He used that account to get sexual images from underage girls. Now, police say that that account may be linked to the murders of Abby Williams and Libby German. Here at five o'clock, Indiana State Police searching the Wabash River right now in Peru, and it may be in connection to the Anthony Schatz 
Suspect, Keegan Klein. These photos sent to us from our partners at the Murder Sheet Podcast. They show divers in the Wabash River near the new Nickel Plate Bridge in Peru. The Murder Sheet reports the search is, in connected, is connected to Keegan Klein. You'll remember Klein faces 30 child porn-related charges for using the Anthony Schatz social media account to get sexual images and videos of young girls. Police have said that account may be linked to the murders of Abby Williams and Libby German in Delphi in 2017. Court records show that 10 days ago, state police had court permission to take Klein out of the Miami County Jail, but would not specify why. The murder sheet reports that it was for a search of the river. Now, court documents also say Klein was in negotiations with prosecutors, leading to a delay in his next court appearance. Klein has not been charged in the Delphi case. In fact, no one has been arrested in those murders. State police have not made public comment on the search. Today, Kagan Klein, they had five, the prosecutor dropped or dismissed five. I did see that this morning. Is that... Is there any correlation between those charges being dropped and the search that was performed in the, in the Wabash River? No, no, absolutely not. Has he? There, there, I think he was charged with 30 hmm. counts. They dropped five, he saw us 25, so it's important you report that too. Right. The case has not been dropped against Keaton Klein. I asked Superintendent Carter if Klein had been cooperative, and he declined to discuss Klein any further. court documents revealed by the Murder Sheet podcast that perhaps Klein recently went on a road trip with Indiana State Troopers. Court records unsealed this week showed that the prosecutor's office and Klein's attorney agreed for Indiana State Police to take temporary custody of Klein outside the jail. The judge granted that request Friday. We don't know why investigators wanted to meet with Klein or where they took him. This is the house where that was initially raided in connection to the uh, the double homicide, the Delphi murders, uh, double homicide of Abby and Libby, and. Well, I'm going to take you guys to the, um, I believe this is the 19th Street Bridge. Um, I may, I may f see a sign here and, f and, and maybe identify it better, but I believe this is State Road 19. It's, it actually turns into Wayne Street here in town. As you can see, that's Wayne. But this bridge here, which we're gonna drive over, it takes you right across the Wabash River. I'm gonna try to drive slow and if you can see, There's the Wabash River, and it's the Wayne Street Bridge is what it's called, okay? 
And the reason we're here today is because I'm going to share an account of of what I facility two years ago. So basically I'm gonna turn in here and I'm gonna park right in there and we'll take it from here. Here we go. Okay. So it is the Wayne Street uh, Bridge, which goes over the Wabash River. And I'm gonna walk down this path and uh, we're gonna, we're gonna go down here, walk to this area. It looks like somebody's got a, a grill. There's some fishing equipment. And there is, I guess over here to the right, what looks like um, some type of bedding, perhaps. Maybe some people make their living here which it totally describes what I was told. Um, my friend or acquaintance that I met, as we can see, somebody stays here and I wonder if it's him, but yeah, I had met this guy, his name's Tim, and um, he gave me an account about this area here, okay? in regards to to uh, what was going on back then but as you can see um, this looks like a place that homeless people frequent quite a bit you can see it right here you can see pillows it totally matches the description that was given to me well, anyway, let's get back to this main area. Okay, so this is where I'm going to start. And of course, now we know that that's the Wayne Street uh, Bridge. It goes over the Wabash River. Here is the Wabash River. Okay, and the story goes as follows. Okay, while I was... Uh, while I was at the... Uh, Miami County facility I met Tim and Tim described this area to me and he told me that this is where he would spend a lot of his time and one one day he he had a a device I don't know exactly what it's called but I can describe it he had what he called uh, a device that a magnet fishing tool and basically what that what that um 
That's interesting because I see this here. Basically what he told me it was, you guys can see this string here and it goes into the, into the river there, into the water. But basically what he described was that this fishing, this magnet fishing device, he used it here in this general area right here to abstract scrap metal from the, oh, it looks like there's fire going on over there. Somebody started a fire under the bridge. I wonder if it was Tim. But anyway, Tim told me that he was uh, collecting scrap metal and he basically, the process is simple. You throw the line into the water and it's some kind of, of magnetic device that, that um, some type of magnetic device that will collect scrap metal and, and you pull it to the bank here and collect the metal and go sell it right that that's what he used to do and um as tim was telling me this story he said that he was standing in this general area right here in this general area and that he looked up onto the bridge over there and he saw tony klein driving across the bridge and um, right about this area here, he told me that Tony Klein saw him standing down here collecting scrap metal. And Tony Klein, about the middle of the bridge right there, he did a U-turn, okay, and came rushing this way up to the, the stop sign up here looped around and came and parked right where I parked and then he came barging down this path up to this general area where Tim was magnet fishing okay and he was driving a similar white truck like that <laughs> this would have been uh, in 2020 I believe or 2021 um, anyway um, that was his story and and he told me that yeah tony klein came barging down here and confronted him right about this area and said what are you doing what are you fishing for and let me see what you have collected and that always stuck to me and tim had shared that story with me in regards to to um a possible weapon being tossed out onto the Wabash River, which uh, also there has been um, stories about a different location, and this would be a different location. I know that Indiana State Police did a very rigorous search uh, about three miles west from here, in that look, in that direction, on what's known the Blue. Um, nickel plated bridge which is on the northwest end of town but this would have been another general area where a weapon could have been tossed out and Tim sharing that story made me think that Mr. Tony Klein had some kind of interest uh, on what he was doing and what he was fishing out of the Wabash River.